Um, this is uh, one of the brothers. We're gonna uh, some of these. You'll this brother you're gonna hear on the newsletter uh, coming up this uh, in the next year, year or so. Uh, he's he is from a very devout. He's from the Fulani from that area. The, the very devout Islamic. But the the phrases that whatever the Fulani believes, everybody hears about. They're very warring, courageous, loud type of people. And he's the first believer of 21 villages and 16,000 people. At this point, there's only five, uh, four more that have joined him at this point in faith. And uh, his father uh, was a uh, uh, imam and his Quranic teacher. He's like you. Uh, <laughs> oh, out of my tribe, which tribe is it? No, I'm, I'm blessed with a righteous tribe and righteous people around me. But, you know, he's had to, to grow up in, uh, you know, in, in a lonely island at times. And literally, losing all his friends, he talks about. When he was growing up, he never met a Christian until he was 17. Some of his friends would go to the big season, and they'd come back and say, I met an unbeliever today. He said he feels so bad for them because they're going to hell. And uh, his father was a very uh, intelligent and educated man. And then he had to go away uh, for school, and he had to live with different people, and he had to continue to move around because he didn't really have a place to live. Well, this uh, one friend he made, his father worked for one of the missionaries there. And so they said, well, you can live with us. And so that way, he, uh, from that, he met the uh, missionary. And the missionary asked him if he wanted to be in a Bible study. And he had never heard about the Bible, but his father was truly an open man and, and a very good father. And he would quote from the Hadith that, that uh, Muhammad would say, go find knowledge where you can find it, even as far as China. And so he, he thought, well, this is good to know what the Christians believe. And so he started going to Bible study. And he read the Bible through three times during five years of Bible study. And he even would do, the, and he started doing his correspondence of just Bible knowledge. He filled in, and he'd have to send it in. Well, it came to uh, this correspondence where it got into, uh, well, the first one he got was actually on creation. And he just loved it because the Quran didn't say much about creation. And just to, to hear about how God created things was just fantastic to him. And then he finally got to Jesus and who Jesus was. And he had to fill in. He knew the answer because they'd given the scripture that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. And, 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 and no one should the Father except through him. And, he, and it took him 15 days because he didn't even want to complete it. Well, uh, he didn't want to write that in. Finally, he wrote it in, and he prayed to Allah to forgive him. And he gets, but he gets him <laughs> to complete it so he can go on to the next one, you know. And, uh, and so, and so he, this continued to go on. And, but the, so finally, the, uh, as he saw more and more conflict, he decided he wanted to prove, even though he read the Bible through the, the, these many times, he wanted to prove that Christianity is wrong. And so he started to do that. And then there was a fire in his house. And everything burned except the Bible. It was on his table. All the books around, right next to him. Even the school books burned. And the Bible didn't even burn. He said later he thought about how God was just surrounding him. He didn't even realize what that meant later until he was saved. Uh, and and, um, and, and he start, as he studied the Bible, trying to find problems in the Bible, because before he just read it for enjoyment, and now he's trying to critically take it apart, he began to see that there's problems in the Quran. He couldn't find the problems in the Bible. And so that really created a conflict in his life. And, uh, and, and so he, he, was, he was struggling through this and, and, and praying about it. And, and then he began to look more and more at the Quran, the problems. And he came across two problems that were major for him. Because he really became consumed with salvation. He wanted to be saved. And he, and he saw by the Quran that the teaching was that Adam and Eve sinned once, and then they were kicked out of heaven. Well, the Quran teaches that every person has two angels. One records bad deeds. One records good deeds, and all those books are put on scales at the end of judgment, and the smallest degree of the bad deeds will outweigh, the, if they outweigh the good deeds, you go to hell. Well, he thought if Adam and Eve were already in heaven and they got kicked out for one sin, what chance does he have for as many sins to ever get in? So it really bothered him. And, uh, and then the other, he is Satan. He said Satan was, was God's high, big guy, uh, you know, leading worship, and he screwed up once and is out. So he was devastated because he said, I, there's no way in Islam I'll ever be good enough. Mm -hmm. So then finally the Holy Spirit started drawing in. But again, they, he did, from his tribe, there was no one who was a believer. Mm -hmm. So he prayed for God to show him what the truth really was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and he had, a, uh, he had been a vision in two nights in a row. And Jesus came and revealed himself to, uh, to him and told him he was the way. And again, that uh, he was to follow him, and that God had a purpose in his life. 
And so he gave his life over, and of course he's uh, seen persecution, different things, but by the conduct of his life, he just continues to grow in passion, and God's given him a real heart to bring the gospel to all the Muslim tribes uh, in that area.